him, and that was uh, Chu King Hong, and he had just begun to set up his uh, teaching. He had just come over from Hong Kong. He was a student of uh, Yang Sao Chung in Hong Kong, the uh, last remaining great son of Yang Ching Fu. Uh, he moved to Hong Kong in the revolution in 1949 and uh, continued to uh, practice Tai Chi all the way down. And so uh, I went to Chu King Hong just in his house uh, on the floorboards and I just uh, literally became one of his first students, if not the first student of, of that man. And slowly uh, he started to get a few other students. Anyway, that was uh, an eye-opener because he actually started uh, showing me how to punch things. And I thought, wow, this is different, you know, different from this. Yeah. It was just still an all slow moving form. But he would actually uh, have me hold mitts because I was his training partner as well. And he would get his training uh, beating the crap out of me as well. So that was my uh, first introduction to <coughs> <coughs> sorry, to uh, real Taiji. And I stayed there for about four years with him. And uh, he's, he became more commercial and more commercial. And uh, he started to get into some, you know, Silly areas that uh, he heard about. I, I used to study Aikido as well in London. Very, very good man. Yeah. And he heard that this man could sit on the floor. No one could push him over. That's rubbish, by the way. And so uh, Chu started to do this. And he said, er, er, come, come. And he'd sit on the floor and he'd say, puss, puss. So I'd just go, bang. And he'd go flying over. He said, oh, no good, no good. <laughs> he got into things like putting sticks in his eyes and, trying to ward it off with his chi, for God's sake, you know. And I'd be going, eh, 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 and he'd come in with a black eye. You know, so. <laughs> but anyway, that, 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 that sort of area continued with Chu, and that's when I sort of called it a day because uh, he went really commercial. He started, um, you know, sort of asking his students to jump around for him, as they all do nowadays, unfortunately. So, yeah, so that was my introduction to Tai Chi, uh, real Tai Chi coming to London. So, um, after that, um, he, he knew, like, uh, from my memories of some of your stories, because I love listening to your stories, um, he had some of the uh, Wudang forms as well, or was am I a bit wrong on that? No, no, that wasn't Chu. No, Chu, Chu learnt from um, Yang Sao Chung. Yeah. He did not learn the old Yang style. Yang Sao Chung, uh, Chu was a relative newcomer to Yang Sao Chung. The, Yang Sao Chung had three disciples. Uh, uh, Chu Jin Sun in Boston, he got into a load of rubbish as well, you know, pushing people over without touching them in the end. Yang Sao Chung never did this. He never did any of this crap, you know. Uh, I don't know why his students did it. There was Ip Tai Tak, who I met in uh, Hong Kong as well. And uh, to my knowledge, he didn't get into that uh, silly area. But the other two certainly did. Uh, but, yeah, Chu just got uh, the Yang Ching Fu's form. He got all of the push hand stuff. He got uh, some of the small San Sao stuff. Uh, he, he got Bagua as well from his Bagua teacher, who was Ho Ho Choi, with whom I later studied as well. Uh, so, so I was learning Bagua and Taiji from uh, Chu King Hong. So, was that the start of like you creating your own system, like because you were, uh, had Bagua as well as Taiji um, thrown in as a as a, a whole bag? Yeah, uh, over over the years, of course, when you first start all this, you th you, you know you, you think you're invincible, you think you're Superman, and uh, you know I had a few fights and uh, I discovered I wasn't. So then I started to look at the realities of what I was doing in the street. And I think that's the biggest difference to what I do, to what everyone else does. They're still back there thinking they're Superman and they're going to use their chi to defend themselves and to move someone without touching them. Very dangerous area that, you know, these uh, charlatan teachers get into because I heard one young girl saying she 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 would just walk around the, the the streets of Soho, for instance, in London, any alleyway, and not be afraid because she could just flick her fingers and and uh, yeah. someone would go flying. Uh, 
so that's a, a very, very uh, dangerous area for, to teach anyone. So the biggest difference is I, I, I began to learn through trial and error and from literally going out on the streets and doing it that um, Taiji was a fantastic and Bagua were both fantastic fighting and self-defense arts, but they certainly had to be taught and used in a different way. And it was my belief that that was the way of the grand old masters who developed these systems because they had to defend themselves back then. And they certainly not going to stand there and wave their hand and, and have people flying away. They used to kill people. And so that's where my system, if you like, has come from. It, it's literally come from reality. Although the basic forms are all the same, they're still all the same. I used to see, for instance, one of my main teachers, well, my main teacher, uh, Chang Yuchan, practicing, and his Taiji was totally different to mine. And uh, But he kept saying, no, it's the same, it's the same. And I kept saying, no, it's not. I can't even recognize what you're doing. And, of course, slowly, as you train in any real Taiji or Bagua system, your level changes and everything becomes smaller. And now I'm doing it much the same as what uh, Chang Yuchan would do. It. But that's just a, that's just a sideline. So basically... Uh, all the foundation forms are still the same. It's the way I teach Taiji and the way I teach the self-defense area of Taiji that's, uh, that's, that's different. I'd just like to sort of go on that, how everything becomes a little bit smaller, because when I, I went and saw you in America, um, even though I've seen you so many times, from the last time I saw you to the time I saw you this year, there was a few things that I'm going. I was struggling to remem remember it in the form, and but once you explained it, it was very easy. But it seems to be even getting smaller and smaller. But but it's all there once you open the mind to watch it properly. You can still see it all, but you've got to just forget about okay the big form. Like it was quite even daunting for me to watch you and then go, okay, just relax, That that's all there. And then you get to a point and you go, okay, that's familiar. So that must have been that. Um, and so I'm, I'm just sort of um, so, in, in, like, oh, not, not impressed, but so so in awe of sometimes when I watch you and, I, and, and then I sit back and I go, it, it looks right. And I've always gone why I've always stayed um, with, with you and, and that because you it is a, like a reality check. And that it always works out when you open your mind to it that you can actually see it and you can say, yeah, that's how I would do it if if I was that good, so to speak. Yeah. Well, I, I think it's a matter of being that good. It's just a matter of progression. That's all. Most The reason that most people never get to what we call like Yang Lu Chan's way of doing Tai Chi is that they learn something from, from a so-called master who's dressed in a silver lame suit and who calls, calls himself master and puts himself up on a pedestal. And um, they think that it should never change from that. The master might have only learnt that. You know, he may not be there himself. And so the student thinks, well, even though when they, if they practice all their lives, for as long as I've been practicing even, as they go through it, they don't want to change because that's how they learnt it and they must stick to what the master has taught them. And that's why I always say to people, the most important area, apart from all the teaching and you know, the physical movements and stuff, is that you must always, as you've just uh, said, see your teacher practicing uh, the internal fighting systems at an advanced level. Now, when I go and do, for instance, that workshop we did in America that you and Laurent came to, uh, I didn't expect many of those people to actually learn the small frame form. But years later, they'll be practicing themselves and they won't be afraid then mm. to change it themselves, to go smaller because they've seen me do it. And that's like, like, you know, the Chinese call it the oak seed. I plant the oak seed. 
by doing these very advanced movements in front of people so they at least see it. And I, I, quite often I'll look out at an, at an audience, uh, as we've had in America, over 70 people, and, and the audience will be going, bloody hell, what is all this? You know, how will I ever do this? But it doesn't matter because many years later, the penny will drop or the oak seed will sprout and they'll think, ah, yeah, that's what it was all about. But they will never have got to that area had they not seen me, yeah. just literally seen me doing it. Because seeing is an energy thing and seeing me doing Taiji like the small frame form when I can't even talk properly because the energy is so balanced and moving correctly – that's an energy. That's energy being put into the people. Now, I've just said earlier that, you know, all this chi and this energy thing is rubbish, but this area, it isn't. You know, you can't go out and, and, and hit someone without touching them and, and, and have them move. That's a physical thing. But energy is a reality, and that's and everything has energy. And the more you practice the internal fighting systems, like Taiji or Bagua, there are two lots of I'll just get do a little sideline here because I like to do this. There are two lots of energy. There's your own personal energy, which is sometimes called magnetisms. People like um, Laurence Olivier had a natural magnetism. So when he was on the stage, people were literally transfixed on him, and, and they thought, "Oh, yeah, he's a great actor." He was a good actor, but he also had this energy field literally around him that. He didn't know about this, but you know some people do. Uh, alcoholics, drug addicts, and so on, their energy starts to be withdrawn inside of them until it goes right inside of them, and they can be sitting at a party and you won't, won't even know there's someone there. That's how bad it gets. So the more of this energy you have, the more you can teach people correctly with energy. Mm. Uh, the, the other lot of energy is called, uh, of course, universal energy. And the more energy we have, the more chance we've got of joining that with the big energy, the universal energy. So, yeah, that's, so that, 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 that's why you're coming to this stage that you're coming to now is because you're still doing it and you've seen me do it. And, uh, yeah, okay, I've forgotten what the original question was now. <laughs> well, I've, I've got to say, look, that's why I always travel the distance. Like, uh, even in, in my early days with you, um, and I've got to thank my wife for saying to me when, when I first met you that you were six hours drive away, and I came back and I said, oh, I won't be able to do it. And her answer was, why not? And it truly was, why not? Like, why not put the effort in? And she just said, do it. And, um, and because every time I, I see you, or even Eli, like the recently at Eli's camp, um, I came back from Eli, like seeing Eli, and I, I felt that my scapulars were, were freeing up, and I'm going, oh, that feels different. And so it's for just doing, and, and we didn't even talk about scapulars or, or anything, but just watching someone better or, or more advanced than you is is truly i think one of the, one of the big keys that, that people don't realize that the, the videos are great the dvds are, are definitely great um, but they've got to put the extra effort in and, and and going along to your workshops or realize workshops and and i think that just makes the penny drop yeah Hang on a minute, I'll just tell Eli to go offline. Eli! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you got it? It started stuffing up as soon as Eli, he, he's got his, his lap. Quite often we'll have six bloody laptops sitting here and I'll be trying to upload something that's going. <laughs> okay, yeah, 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 you've got the, the, the right idea there. That, that, that. That, that's basically it in a nutshell, mate. You know, that, that, that's what happens. Um, yeah, so what more can I say? 